Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today we'll be evaluating the exact value of this um, infinite sum right here. And we will be using that formula that I developed, I believe it was in example 145, or no, I think it was, it's just titled, um, I'm not sure what it's titled, but I'll link to it in the description. Um, so you can see where this formula comes from. Basically, it's just a generalized uh, version of the uh, the Fourier series formula. Um, and basically, um, what we get is this. We have this. Um, we have that any function f of x on the interval uh, negative pi to pi can be represented like this. Now, this comes from the Fourier series formula uh, that involves, um, you know, uh, b sub 0, b sub n, a sub n, um, and and things like that but this this is what it really is this is what that's actually saying um so we can we can represent and again i will link to the video in which i showed why um you can you can rewrite any function f of x exactly like this and it will be valid for x between negative pi and pi and i'll link to the video where i showed that so um you know, because I don't like to use things in my videos um, that I don't understand. So if you don't understand why this is true, check that video out and you will see why it's true. But anyway, continuing on from here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to set f of x equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x. Um, so basically, we're just replacing f, uh, f of x with cosh x or hyperbolic cosine of x anywhere we see an f of x and then we get this all right so now what do we do um we have to evaluate the integrals um and we have a bunch of integrals here um it makes sense to to just well, let's just start with this one so the integral of the hyperbolic cosine x over negative pi to pi, we'll label that i sub 0 for an integral. That's our, um, that's our i sub 0, and it's equal to that. All right. Now, the first thing we've got to realize is that that's an even function. So we can just get rid of the negative part um, and multiply the entire thing by 2. And if you perform that integration, you will see that it evaluates to 2 um, hyperbolic sine of pi. So we can replace this with 2 hyperbolic sine of pi. Alright, next, let's evaluate um, the, the next one. This integral negative pi to pi of cosine hyperbolic x times cosine nx dx. Um, we'll label that i sub n. Um, again, we'll use the evenness of the hyperbolic cosine and cosine nx um, to just double the integral over the positive interval. So that's what that becomes. And we're going to leave it like that for now. We'll actually come back to that later. And actually, um, you know, I'll show you what the value of that actually is. Um, but let's just move on to this one. Uh, this is going, since... Uh, cosine hyperbolic is even and sine nx is odd. Their product is odd. Therefore, this is an uh, integral, an odd integral over a symmetric integral and is therefore equal to zero. So that entire part, this part right here in our formula, this entire thing right here is going to go to zero. It will just drop out. So that's some really good simplification. All right, so our next step, we're just going to simplify it. Um, we're, we're basically just going to plug those things, plug the values that we found in to our original formula. So we'll end up with this. We replaced, th this uh, was the integral from negative pi to pi of cos of uh, hyperbolic cosine of x. And don't forget, we have that integral that evaluated to zero. Um, so this entire thing is going to evaluate to zero right here. And then we have just this sum going from one to pi of the sum from n equals one to infinity of cosine nx times our i sub n, which we need to figure out. 
so th this is basically this is basically what we have now we've uh we've whittled down um cosine hyperbolic of x is equal to this so um oh i mean obviously it's good again from negative pi to pi um and now we just need to figure out what that i sub n is all right so our i sub n don't forget was two times the integral from zero to pi of the hyperbolic cosine of x times cosine nx dx and i'm not going to show that um it's solvable with integration by parts and th this is this is what you'll end up getting if you if you do that integration part. actually i think you'll have to do uh integration by parts twice um and you'll recover a constant multiple of the uh original integral and you you can Using techniques from Calculus 1, just standard integration techniques, um, you can you can get this, or some version of this, something that will simply... This or something that is equivalent to this. It, it's a totally solvable integral, so I don't want to go over um, how to actually do that. It's, it's not... It's, it's difficult, it's involved, but like I said, it can be done with standard uh, integration techniques. All right. So now let's remember, we're plugging this thing back into an infinite sum starting at n is equal to 1. All right. So for integers n starting at n is equal to 1, cosine pi n can be replaced by negative 1 to the n because cosine of pi is negative 1 cosine of 2 pi is 1, cosine of 3 pi is negative 1, so it just goes like that. And for sine uh, pi n, that's just going to be equal to 0. So again, we have some nice cancellations. This entire part right here will just go away, and this part will become a negative 1 to the n, and then we can distribute and simplify, um, and we'll end up with this. So that is our i sub n. So now we can substitute that back into our equation for uh, cosine uh, for the hyperbolic cosine of x. So that is what we'll do. So now, um, since we have this, we just substitute it back into our equation for cos uh, hyperbolic cosine x, and we get this. And then that simplifies to this. And I won't go into too much detail explaining that. That's just algebra. Um, you know, there, there's nothing there's nothing complicated there. All right. So basically, um, well, we're we're almost done. So now what we want to do is take this equation right here, and this is good on negative pi to pi, so we can let x equal pi, and this equation will hold. So let's just let's set x equal to pi, and that's going to give us this. And wouldn't you know it, a cosine n pi again turns up. That is going to equal negative 1 to the n for uh, integers n starting at 1. That negative 1 to the n will be multiplied by this negative 1 to the n, and it's just this, it's going to cancel out and just become a 1. So we are now left with this cos, uh, cosh of, or co, the hyperbolic cosine of pi is equal to this. All right, now this was the sum we were, we were trying to, to find out, right? So we basically have it. Now it's just. It's just doing some algebra. It's just isolating that sum. So we'll label that sum S. And then we get this. And, you know, go ahead and follow this if you'd like. It's it's laid out pretty clearly. And that's it. That's what we end up with. So that sum, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1, is equal to 1 half times pi hyperbolic cotangent of pi minus 1. That is the exact value of that sum, and hopefully I will be using that sum um, in a future video uh, to solve a nice integral using Feynman integration. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'll see you next time.